Load balancers and auto scaling group are used in every application these days for high availability and scalability. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create load balancers and auto scaling group in AWS for your applications to ensure high availability, scalability and fault tolerance. So watch this step by step video till the end. Let's start. All right, so I'm here on my computer screen and to create load balancers and auto scaling group, you need to go into EC2 service and you can find load balancers and auto scaling group below here. So here is the load balancer and this is the auto scaling group. Right now, if I show you, I have two servers running. Let me show you what do I have on this server. So if I copy my public IP and paste it in a new tab, let me close this and paste it here. So if I paste it, you can see there's an application which shows instance ID and the availability zone in which my server is. So here is the instance ID of the first server. And if I copy the second one's IP, let me do that. So I'm going to copy the second one's IP and paste it here, which has the same kind of application, but it has its own IP address. Sorry, it has its own instance ID. So here is the first server having 1C84 something, and the second server having 1C90 something. So why do we use load balancers? We use load balancers to distribute traffic among different servers. There can be a scenario where you are hosting your applications on a server, and there is millions of traffic, and the server is not able to handle the traffic. So you can create more servers, and distribute the load using load balancer. So when using load balancer, if I refresh, I should go to this server first and then to the second server and then to the third server. Another benefit is rather than having multiple IP address, you can have a one single domain, which is what you can get when using load balancers. So let's go and create it real quick. So I'm gonna click on load balancers here and AWS provides you with different load balancers. There are different load balancers like application load balancer, network load balancers, gateway load balancer, and the previous generation, which is classic load balancer. Usually all the time you will be using and creating application load balancer, but you, there might be a scenario where you need more performance and high speed. So you can, you might be using network load balancer, but the creation of these two are very similar. So if you understand what is how to create application load balancer, you can also create network load balancers. So if you want to know why, when to use what, you can just read this description, which says if you're using HTTP and HTTPS traffic, use application. If you're using TCP, UDP traffic, use this. And if you want to use third party applications, you can use this. For now, I'm going to create an application load balancer and I am going to write the name as my ALB, so this is my app load balancer. I'm going to make it internet facing, which is going to be public load balancer, not an internal load balancer. I'm going to use IPv4 address type. If you have IPv6 as well, you can use dual stack. I don't have any, so I'm not going to use that. Next, you need to select what VPC we want to launch. I have my servers inside the default VPC, so I'll be selecting that. And also the subnets in which I have my uh, servers inside. So my servers are in US West 1C. This one is also in US West 1C, so no problem. But even though I'm selecting both of these AZs, Next, I need to select the security group. Make sure you have security group selected, which has which has port uh, HTTP or HTTPS open. If you have SSL certificates, you can use HTTPS. For me, I'm using HTTP because I'm not using any SSL certificate. If you use HTTPS, you can see here, it's, it's going to ask you for a SSL, but if I use HTTP, it will not require any SSL certificates. So I'm going to create a new security group for my load balancer, which is kind of a good practice. So I'm going to click on create a new security group. And let's get a security group for ALB. So I'm going to name this as ALB security group and give a description as this is my security group for load balancer. Okay. So it's going to be created in the default VPC. I'm going to add a rule saying HTTP traffic because this application runs on HTTP. So this is fine. I'm going to make it all IP, which is correct and click on create security group. So let me select anywhere IPv4 and then click on create security group. Perfect, so now I have my security group created. I'm going to go back to my load balancer screen, refresh this and select the security group, which I created right now. You can create multiple, you can attach multiple security group, but I'm going to just attach one here. And you, you also need to have target group if you want to put the instances behind the load balancer. And for that, you need to create one. Let's go ahead and create target group. Inside target group, you can put instances, you can also put IP addresses, you can put Lambda functions or, or different application load balancer. For now, we are using load balancers to distribute traffic among these two servers. So we are going to use instances. And I'm going to name this target group as anything, let's say my target group. And this target group is going to run on port 80, which is HTTP, that is correct. And I need to do the health check on slash. Health check means if you want to check this page, you can use slash. If you want to check some other page, let's say this page, which has slash uh, something, let's say slash load.php. I can also implement, I can also implement a health check on here, but I want to check at the home path, which is just slash. So I'm going to put my target group health check on slash. If any time this path is not working, it will give me an error and load balancer will not show that instance. So if you can, you need to configure this properly. Uh, you can properly, you can also edit more settings like how many times it should be healthy, how many times it should be unhealthy, what should be the timeout and what should be the success code. Some applications uh, might be intentionally showing error, error responses like connection refused or 404. But if you, if you want to have success code like 200, which means it's working, then you can set the port as success code as 200. So that is fine. And I'm going to click on next here to create it. 
once this is done, I need to select what servers I need to put here. So these are the two servers I want to, to be behind load balancers. So I'm going to select them and choose as include as pending below. Once I do this, let's click on create target group. And this target group is now created. Now let's go back to the load balancer screen and refresh this again. After I refresh, I can select this and scroll down. I don't need any of these. And now I'm going to click on create load balancer. Once I create this, Okay, so once my load balance is created, it's going to be in the provisioning state. Let me show you that. So this is in provisioning state. We have to wait till it comes to an active state. Once it is active, you can copy this DNS name and you might you will be able to see your application. Let me just paste it in my new tab here. If I paste it right now, it says DNS Pro because it's still in provisioning state. But after some time, you can you should be able to see your application here. Uh, one more thing to notice is you will get DNS, not an IP address when you create load balances. So just make sure that whenever you do it, you need to map your domain name with your load balancer here. Let's wait for some time and then we should be able to see our application that we see here on our load balancer. If, I, if my load balancer is ready, uh, let's check if this is ready or not. So it says active. So right now if I refresh, I should be able to see my application here. So you can see it says the application which is having instance ID 10C9D. If I refresh, it should show me the second server which means it is traffic, balancing the traffic properly. Uh, you can see it says 84 now so every time i do it it's first it will show me the first server then the second server refreshing second first so this is known as round robin fashion where you can distribute traffic among these two different servers so if any time you are having issues come back to your target group and check if your instances are healthy or not if they're not healthy you will not be able to see the traffic you will not be able to see your home page you can see here both of my instances are healthy and i'm able to see them with through my uh, through my load balances dns so this is how you can create load balances and distribute traffic but for, I have created these two servers manually myself. If my traffic is increased and I want to have more servers, let's say server 3, server 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, how can I do that? And to do that, we need to use something known as auto scaling group, which can, which can automatically create servers depending on the traffic and also, might also delete the servers if the traffic is less. So to demonstrate this, let's go and create an auto scaling group. But before creating auto scaling group, we also need something known as launch template or launch configuration. Let me show you how. So I'm going to click on auto scaling group here. You can read about it. So auto scaling group helps maintain the availability of your applications. And I'm going to click on create auto scaling group here. Let's give a name. So I'm going to say this as my ASG or my auto scaling group. Uh, we need to have launch template. Launch template is kind of a template which defines what should be the settings for the new instances created by auto scaling group. So I'm going to click on create launch template here and give all the details on how it should be created. But before we actually do this, we have to also create an image of our server. So if you see here, it's going to ask us what should be the AMI. So I'm going to go back to my servers here. Uh, let's go to servers, instances. I'm going to create a copy or an image of my server so that every new instance should have this application on it without me configuring and installing Apache or everything that I've done on this server. So I'm going to go here, click on actions, click on image and templates and click on create image. Let's name this as launch image and I'm going to add a description saying image for auto scaling group. You need to do this or else every server that is going to be created by auto scaling group will be fresh and will not have your application, which is not what you want. So I'm going to create an image so that every time a new server is created, you should have the application ready on it. So I'm going to click on create image and now go back to the launch, launch template screen. Let's give this a name saying my template and I'm going to say this description template for auto scaling group. Okay, this is done. I'm going to select my AMIs and select the AMI that I created right now, which is launch image. And next I need to select the instance type. If I want all instances to be T2 micro, I can select T2 micro here. I want all instances to have a key pair, which is this key. I want all instances to have a security group, which is uh, my SG. And I also want all security, all instances to have 8 GB, which is fine. Once I do this, let's click on create launch template and the template will be created. This template is required for your auto scaling group. So now I'm going to refresh this and add the template that I created right now, which is my template. Next, after creating this, uh, if you want to edit something, you can also create different versions which is supported by launch template and not supported by something which is known as launch configuration, which is a previous version of launch template. I'm going to click on next now and choose the VPC in which I want to launch this. Make sure you have the VPC similar to what you have created your servers and your load balances inside. So choose the same VPC. For AZs, I'm going to select all the AZ so that it should be highly available. And I'm going to click on next option here. I, I do have a load balancer, so you can also attach a load balancers such that Every instances created by auto scaling group should be behind the load balancers and should be managed every time. If I refresh, I should see the instances here as well. So if I, I'm going to say attached to an existing load balancer, which is here. And to do that, you need to select your target group, which is this. Uh, now I need to, you can also enable health checks on load balancers as well as on instance level. I don't need to enable monitoring, but you can also do that. If you want to have more metrics, you can. Now you can select how many instances do you want to, uh, do you want auto scaling group to create? So you can select 
mini maximum it can it should create five or minimum it should have two instances running all the time so depending on this auto scaling group will create maximum five servers after five servers even if the traffic is more it will not create any server you can do this to save your cost uh, next you can also select target tracking policy which means you can create more servers or launch servers depending on some certain criteria like cpu utilization network in network out or application or balancer so for example here if i explain you what is happening here According to this, if the CPU of the first server is 50%, then launch a new server. If the CPU of next second server is 50, launch another, then another. You can change this value to 50, to 75 or anything. Also 80, whatever you want. So I'm going to click on next. And then if you want to set notifications every time auto scaling group is creating something, you can also do that here by choosing SNS, which is simple notification service by AWS. I don't want, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to click on next here. And then I can click on next again to skip add, skip adding tags and then create auto scaling group. Once I do this, you can see uh, auto scaling group is going to be created and then I should have one instance running as well. So you can check all the information about auto scaling group here. Every time an instance is created, it will be seen in this section activity. So you can see the capacity, we have set the capacity to one. So it's going to change from zero to one. And after some time in our target group as well, we will have new instances. So. You can see the new instance which has been created is also in the target group. So this is the instance created by auto scaling group. Even if I delete this instance, auto scaling group will create a new one to maintain the to maintain the count of one. Uh, not only this, once this instance is created and healthy, I should be able to see it when I refresh. When I refresh, so right, I should see three different instances behind load balancer. So I'm going to refresh. This is the first instance. Now you can see this has been changed to FE, which is second instance. If I refresh, this has been changed to yeah, this is third different instance. So three different instances I have here. Uh, this is how you can set up your load balances in auto scaling group to make your applications highly available scalable and resilient to failure uh, resilient to failure in the sense means if i delete this server here and terminate it auto scaling group is going to detect that and create a new one so if i show you here in the auto scaling group section here now in the auto scaling group i have defined it should have one instance running all the time no matter what so desired capacity is one auto scaling group is going to detect that the instance that was there has been deleted and it will start creating a new one so if you see here within some time it is going to detect that and create a new one right this is how you can set up your load balances and auto scaling group if you have any questions any doubt feel free to drop in the comment section make sure i answer all of them i hope this was informative thank you and have a good day bye